Hi and welcome to Magic Scanner website, a fundamental stock selector for KLSE and SGX financial market. You're about to learn the secrets to raking in double to triple digit return per annum in trading or investing, no matter how much time you've had to prepare. It doesn't matter if you've never had any past experience or education, this Magic Scanner will tell you everything you need to know without spending too much brain power. This is unlike any tool you'll find out there. It's the edge that most analysts and fund managers want or have. Go ahead and get yours now. Thank you. Welcome to our Friday chart clinic uh, uh, for 23rd of August 2013. Uh, those of you who know, uh, this whole week we have seen lots of red, sea of red. Uh, if you don't know what I mean, uh, yesterday was all sea of red when you look at the chart. Today things have changed much better. We have a lot of green here. But definitely yesterday and on Wednesday, we have a C already. That has changed. But I'll definitely have more of the KLSC update as well as the regional update this evening at 5.15. Now, remember the closing bell this evening. We are starting at 5.15 rather than the usual 4.15 because I have a prior appointment to that. So take note, 5.15, we are going live. And those of you who are premium members can catch us. So, and those of you who are like member can catch a snippet on Saturday. Okay. I uh, can't complain if you're not. On the wrong side. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, we, we're going to uh, start with today's Friday chart cleaning. A very, uh, uh, in the note of things, uh, just want to, uh, three three things in here. The first one, before we get to Bill's goal and uh, our US correspondent update, just want to tell you, we'll be doing our uh, so-called Master the Market Preview Talk, uh, our webinar on the uh, 28th, next Wednesday, 8.30. Uh, over the internet access, we'll be doing our Master the Market preview talk. For those of you who have heard a lot about our VSA main course, but you want to know more about it and how it will benefit you, so come and attend our Master the Market preview talk, which will be happening uh, next Wednesday on August uh, 28th, 8.30 to 9.30. And our Master the main course is one of our best-selling course, and we, myself and Bill, we do do it only twice a year. So, uh, take notice and uh, use this uh, opportunity to uh, re-attend back. There are some of you who did send me an email and did ask me how you can re-attend back because you attended it sometime like four or five years ago. So you can do so. Uh, remember our main course is happening on the 9th of, uh, to 11th of November 2013. Okay, uh, next thing is, uh, if you've done the, so remember, if you want to register for this, just send me an email. If you're a like subscriber, you would have gotten the Master the Market Preview talk uh, from the 9th to 11th of November 2013, okay? Uh, next thing I want to talk, it's a very interesting book by Daniel Kaufman. It is the Economics Nobel Prize winner back in 2002 by a psychologist. Interesting enough, this is the first time that a, uh, Nobel Prize winner comes from a psychologist and not an economics. Uh, well, this book is about thinking fast and slow. Some of you may have seen this book before at the Kinokuya or MPH bookstore. But before I go into the uh, a bit a snapshot of about, I'm going to give you a special bonus at the end. But without further ado, I'll just bring Bill, and he's going to give you a bit update on on the goal and re rethinking goal as well as what's happening to your U.S. market. Okay, Hana has something on me. Look at time.com. Okay, we'll do that. All right, uh, we'll pass you to Bill now. All right, Bill, go ahead. Uh, okay, good morning, everybody. Um, and I hope everybody has, uh, you know, uh, survived the uh, panic. And hopefully this is not going to keep going on. But I will share a few things with you that will help you as time moves on to share the panic. The first one is, I'm just going to pose a question to you. Who is your best friend? Who is your best friend? Now, someone would say, oh, that's my, uh, my brother, that's my wife, uh, you know, my dog. It could be a lot of different things. But I will share this with you. In the practical reality of life and the obligations of life, your best friend is the money that you have in the bank your assets, your liquid assets, because they will not let you down. Um, whenever you take that uh, ringgit note and you go in and, and you go into the shop, they will say, yes, sir, 
whatever you want, if that money will cover it, that is yours. There's no argument. I mean, but I'm saying this is just uh, from a practical point of view. Now, why am I mentioning this? Because um, there's an incredible article in today's uh, the Edge Financial Daily, that's a Friday edition, it came out, and it's called the Warren Buffett's Bubble Cash Out Strategy. It's a great thing, it's worth the 150 that you pay for this uh, newspaper, to, just for this article. Now, in the article, it talks about uh, the pension fund that Warren Buffett was managing since 1975 uh, for the Washington Post newspaper, of whom he's one of the major shareholders, I think he owned the company. And unlike most pension funds in the U.S., which are in trouble, underfunded, mismanaged, and in some cases even bankrupt, uh, this fund actually has made an incredible surplus over the years. Uh, in fact, they have several billion dollars in surplus. So that means the pensioners don't have to worry that their money is not going to be there. And you thank Warren Buffett's sound management of this uh, pension fund. But most pension funds in America are, are not run like Warren Buffett. They buy uh, lots of toxic assets, uh, mortgage-backed securities that went down the drain. Uh, and they bought the hype, all of the, all of the things that... that uh, the crowd was chasing, heavily loaded up in bonds, um, and many of them uh, have, have gone down by 30 and 40 percent. So pity the poor pensioner when he tries to cash out and get his pension. The money is not there. And even municipal pension funds, like the Detroit uh, pension funds, uh, people paid into that uh, for like 30 and 40 years, and now they're at risk of losing 80 to 90 percent of their money. Pity the poor fellows who had worked for the airlines. Many airlines in America uh, had trouble, and they went. They declared bankruptcy, <clears throat> and the pension funds were just stripped from the pensioners, and they get nothing. And then there's many crooked managers of companies who use the pension funds as their own personal piggy bank uh, for crony projects, for expanding the empire, and in the end, who gets hurt? The pensioners. But in contrast, Warren Buffett's fund has made enormous profits, and this is the way to run the fund. Now, what did Warren Buff What does Warren Buffett do when he manages his fund? It's the same way that Martin and I manage our funds. We select only the highest quality income-producing shares, and many of the shares that he held in this fund um, were dividend-producing shares. Uh, Altria was one, J&J &J was another, uh, Procter & Gamble was another. Household names that consistently make good sales and earnings. And remember, since 1975, there have been several major crashes in the U.S. market, several disasters, quite a number of panics. However, this fund has stood the test of time and made good returns for their shareholders. Now, what I'm going to do this weekend, if you, if you get my uh, weekly newsletter, I'm going to put down a link uh, that you can click, and you can get the Warren Buffett, Catherine Graham letter that was written that talks about the way he manages this pension fund. I'll put that on my newsletter this week so that you can see how he does it and how powerful is this strategy. And by the way, when he took over the fund, they kicked out one major U.S. investment bank who was managing the fund and actually lost money in the pension fund. So don't think because a major investment bank is running the fund that it's going to be profitable for you. Remember, investment banks are normally uh, set up for the benefit uh, of the insiders, for the managers, and for the cronies. And they have an agenda, which is not the agenda of the small shareholder. So consider that. But there's a lot of controversy. They didn't want him to manage the fund, but over time he was proven right. Because what he does is not what the crowd of investors do. It's not something that profits the stockbrokers because he doesn't give lots of turnover. So in that sense, I will send this out for you, and I hope uh, it can benefit you. And I would say that I personally uh, have printed out a copy, and, and I'm reading it because hopefully you can learn something as to how Ma Warren Buffett manages funds. So now let's go on to some other issues um, that is happening. Um, one of the one of the things that Martin and I focus on, we don't like shares that have high levels of debt and don't pay dividends or small dividends. And one of them is Air Asia, and they just came out with with an earnings announcement, and and they're they're went down. But even worse, they're loaded up with a lot of debt. And when interest rates go up, guess what? That squeezes their margins. So this is why we don't like companies with lots of debt. Um, and under the current environment in the stock market, uh, there's 
a lot of companies that are like that. So it's something that we need to filter out. So having said that, um, I do wish you well in the coming week. Don't get caught up in the panic. I know some very prominent fund managers in town who are buying on this break, who are buying, who are accumulating quality shares. So don't don't lose uh, your courage or your whatever. Uh, nothing really has changed much. This is a manipulation by large hedge funds to try to break the market. They're attacking Indonesia. They're attacking India. Um, however, Malaysia, I think, will withstand this attack, and they have so far. In fact, one thing I read in the Edge yesterday was that they are not intervening in the currency markets. That is Malaysia. India is. Indonesia is. Malaysia is not. Singapore is not. China is not. These are the strong countries that will withstand this hedge fund assault. Um, and, and I think uh, in, in the end, uh, uh, these countries, Singapore, Malaysia, China, and so on, will win this battle. So have a good week ahead. Martin? All right. Thanks a lot, Bill. Okay. Uh, that's right. Th thanks a lot, Bill. Okay. Now, going on to our next uh, slight topic, it's more of an education, just to share with you before we go into the stock analysis. It's one of the books I've uh, uh, bought and read. It's by uh, Daniel Kaufman. And to save you time, why I want to show you this is to really tell you there's actually a video, uh, about a 15-minute long video. You can watch this. And uh, where he talks about his book and uh, how people should think fast and think slow. How many, how many of you has heard of this uh, gentleman, Daniel uh, Kaufman? And he is supposed to be the so-called king of behavioral science. And if you are into investing and trading, you will probably heard of him because he talks a lot about emotion. How many of you heard of him before, this person named Daniel Kaufman? A very famous uh, 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 psychologist, economist in this area. A Nobel Prize winner. No. All right. Now, yeah, that's right. It's very important that you know his work because this is something I just want to share with you. Good. Okay. And uh, why his work is very important. And along the way, when I was uh, part of my training to become a fund manager and a trader, I read a lot of his books and it helped me a lot on my, uh, on my uh, path to be a good fund manager. Now, what is the key thing and the great takeaway we have from this is it is also the author best-selling books of Thinking Fast and Thinking Rich. This book, rather than buying the book to read, I will give you the link to the YouTube. I will send you this YouTube. You can watch it. It's about 15 minutes long. Save you the time and it tells you everything you need to know about the essence of the book. Would you like that? Yes or no? Okay. Okay. Would you like to listen to this guy talk? Great, great. I'm just going to send to all of you. So, uh, what can you do is watch this uh, YouTube video. You can't Google it because it is a private link. So even if you go to YouTube and type it, you won't get the full version of it. I just want to show you uh, this video here. It's a full length version of the uh, Daniel Kaufman video about 50 minutes long. And the key takeaway I want to share with you in this talk is about two modes of thinking. Now, all of us have our way of thinking. But it, he sums it up and based on his 20 years of research, he finds